This episode is brought to you by the Let's Code Physics Patreon supporters. So one of the most useful shapes in vPython, at least in a physics class context, is the arrow. Uh, since in a physics class we're often dealing with forces and fields and all sorts of different vectors, um, these arrows are very useful because you can attach them to an object, you can uh, put them out there in the, uh, in the animation to show like an electric field or something. And I wanna just go over the basics of how to create an arrow. The function you use is just arrow. And when you wanna create an arrow, you really only need to specify two things. The rest is kind of just set dressing. You need to give the arrow a position and you need to give it an axis, all right? The position is the location where the arrow starts. So let's suppose I want my arrow to start in the upper left-hand corner. I could give a position of vector negative one for the left, one for top, and zero uh, for the z-axis. This is gonna be the location of where the arrow begins. So POS equals where the arrow begins. Axis is going to be the direction in which the arrow points. So if you are a seasoned uh, physics person, this is the relative position vector from pause that it points in. In other words, this isn't the point, it, this isn't the, the address of the point it goes to, this is the general direction that it goes in. So for example, if you want this arrow to point to the right, I can put in vector one, zero, zero. And then I can close this up here. So axis is gonna be direction the arrow points in. So I wanna be clear on the, on the difference there of what I'm talking about. This doesn't mean it's going to point to the location 100, right? Because that would take it, let me get my marker up here. So right now I'm starting the vector over here and it's gonna point in the direction 100 to the right. So this would be the direction 100 going to the right. Imagine that's a straight line. It's not gonna to point to the point 100 because that would be over here, right? This is the point 100. And this is the direction 100. Or if you like, it's 100 relative to this point here. So the axis means this piece. Uh, it's the direction it's pointing, not the location that it's pointing to. Uh, and so when I when I run this with control two, that's exactly what we get. Here is our starting point, our starting point of negative one, one, zero. You can see it's over to the left and up, and it's pointing to the right. Again, it's not pointing down to the to the point one zero zero. That would be over here somewhere. Um, so this is the this is the direction this point is one zero zero, meaning it's going to take a step of one in the x direction and no step in the y and no step in the z. And you can see that brings me from an x of negative one to an x of zero because negative one plus one is zero, at least the last time I checked. And so if you add those two together, you get the new point that it's at. So if you want the ending point, you can get the ending point by taking the position plus the axis. That's going to be important in a minute because in a minute we're gonna to try to connect some vectors. Uh, so this axis, this tells you both the direction and the magnitude of the arrow itself. So if I wanted this to go two units in the X direction, so see I wanted to double the length of this arrow, I could have changed this one into a two and press control two to run. And there you go, it's pointing now two units in the X direction. So I'm going from negative one to positive one. So I'm, I'm go taking one step from negative one to zero and another step from zero to positive one. You might notice the arrow got a little bit wider. Um, the default for the shaft width, that's what this uh, width is here, and the, the head width uh, the, of the actual arrowhead over here, those are by default set to scale with the length of the arrow. So ordinarily you don't have to worry about that. We'll talk about how to change that uh, at near the end of the video today. Um, but usually those scale appropriately. The, the only time I've ever had to adjust those size parameters manually is when I have lots and lots of arrows, like say for an electric field, and they're changing by an order of magnitude and they end up being kind of short and stubby when they're too small or they end up being too thick uh, when they're at the larger magnitude. But otherwise, it's usually okay to leave the scaling set to the default. And then of course, this is a vector. We can play around with its components so I can make this point downward if I want to. 
There we go with two units in the X direction and negative one unit in the Y direction. This is also a great way to help uh, newer students visualize slope. Uh, if you want to help students, you know, learn to think about uh, in terms of, of change in Y or change in X. And of course we can go in three dimensions. I can make this a positive, uh, I don't know, let's pick something fun, positive two fifths. How about control two? And there I go, there's my vector pointing a little bit in the Z direction as well. Um, of course, as with any object in GlowScript or in VPython, I can give this arrow a name. We might as well call it A1 for our first arrow. And then when I want to access information about it, I can just say, you know, print A1.pause or print A1.axis. Or for our ending point here, I can tell it to print A1.pause plus A1.axis. Right, so it follows all the same rules we've seen for spheres and boxes and cones and everything. I can, I can print any of the properties that the, that the arrow has. And like I said earlier, this process of adding position to axis is gonna be important because let's suppose I wanted to connect a bunch of arrows together into a loop. So let's say suppose I wanted to take an A2 as an arrow and let's suppose I want this arrow to start where my A1 ends. Right, so maybe I want to connect my connect some vectors head to tail, for example. Maybe I'm doing vector addition. Um, that's pretty easy to do. I can just say a one dot pause plus a one dot axis. So that's going to guarantee that uh, this vector starts where a one ends, and then I can give this an axis. Let's suppose I want this one just point, let's say upward uh, one zero zero. Close parentheses. Oh, whoops, sorry. Up is not one zero zero. Up is zero one zero. Control two. There we go. So now I've, you notice I've got this vector now starting at the, I've got its uh, beginning point starting at the ending point of the previous vector. And that's really handy because maybe I want to go back and change this vector. Maybe I want it to point um, upward instead of downward. I can just change this. And now because I've got a two referencing a one's properties, that change automatically propagates forward to the a one dot axis here. And you can see that this arrow now moves up. It's, it's always gonna be defined relative to a one here, which is pretty cool. And then I can keep doing that, right? So I can add in an A3 uh, of an arrow, position equals, I just have to repeat this little uh, recipe here, copy and paste and change the A1s to A2s uh, axis. Let's make this one point to the left and hopefully I get my directions correct this time. Control two to run. There you go, that one now connects to the left. Uh, let's get one that goes, uh, let's get one that goes along the Z axis. Copy and paste, so I might have an A4. Change these to A3, A3. Uh, let's change this to a zero. And you know what, let's have this go backwards, negative two fifths. Actually, let's do this one as negative A1 dot axis dot z that way whatever i change this to this will come back to the same direction so if you're doing an advanced class with uh with contour integrals this would also be a cool way to help students learn to visualize the steps in a in a, in a contour integral or a line integral or a path integral uh whichever you prefer to call them and now let's suppose i wanted to close the loop let's suppose i wanted to go from this point to this point over here right so i want my a last to be arrow position, it needs to start at a4.pause, right? I don't get to change that. But I have to figure out what axis I would need to go from here to here. Well, there's a pretty easy uh, uh, recipe for doing that. If you want to go from a starting point to an ending point, you just do the ending point minus the starting point, right? This is the definition of a relative position vector. If you want to go from a starting point and ending point, you just take end minus start, and that's gonna be where you need to go. So I want my ending point to be a one dot pause, and I want my starting point to be this starting point, so that's gonna be a four dot pause. Uh, let's color code this one just to celebrate our victory. Let's make it blue, and we'll do control two. So we're looking for the blue one to close the loop, and sure enough, it Almost does. What did I do wrong there? Oh, whoops. I need that to be a four dot pause. Oh, excuse me. I need this to be a four dot pause plus a four dot axis. So you see how easy it is to get lost in the middle of all this. But the good news is, is 
once you check the visual, you can see, you know, what, what you forgot to do. You know, I forgot to add in uh, A4's axis there. All right, Control-2 again. Now for the dramatic uh, moment here. Um, it looks like I am off by a little bit. Uh, oh, yeah, so this is actually going to need to be minus this thing's starting position. So we're just going to paste this whole thing in here. I had the recipe correct. I just applied it. Uh, incorrectly. Everybody who has taken uh, ENM is empathizing with me now because that's this is key in ENM is getting you know from the source point to the field point. Yeah, so you can make yourself a nice little loop with that little uh, recipe there. And now that I have it written once, I never have to write it again. I will just copy and paste it the next time I need to close up a loop. Now, of course, I can modify an arrow's properties as I go along. Uh, that's really useful in animations. Let me give you an idea of what this looks like. Let's create a ball here that we are going to animate. Um, so let's give it a time value and a DT of a uh, time step of 0 0.1. What I want to do is create an arrow. Uh, let's just call it A for arrow. And uh, what I want to do is I want this arrow to start at the center point. I want to start at the origin, 0, 0, 0. And I want its axis to go wherever the ball's position is. Now, I haven't given the ball a position yet, so it's going to default to 0, 0, 0. I'll be changing that in just a second. Um, let's have this thing go around in a circle of radius, let's say, 5. And let's have this run while time is less than, uh, let's say, 10. So in order to animate something in vPython, I need to give it a rate so that we'll update on the screen. That's just saying I want 10 frames per second. And we're gonna say ball.pause equals, let's just have it move around in a circle. So a circle is given by cosine of time, comma, sine of time and zero. And then of course I need to update time or else it's not going to move because it won't change that time value. Okay, so this should give me an animation of a ball in a circle. There we go. Uh, you notice it's not showing me the arrow yet because my arrow uh, went from 000 to 000. I told it ball.pause because, let's make this color equals color.red. I told it uh, axis equals ball.pause, but the ball's position was 000 at that point. So it's a zero length arrow, which doesn't show up on the screen. What I can do here in the loop is update A's axis to be ball.pause. And now watch what happens with the arrow because each frame in the animation, the ball is moving and it's resetting the arrow's axis. So it's able to rotate the arrow around. I'm not changing the arrow's uh, position. I'm not changing its, its starting point here, but I am changing, uh, let's refresh this, but I am changing its axis. So I'm changing what direction it goes into. And that can change the direction, that can change the length as well. Uh, let's suppose I wanted this ball to move in an ellipse. I could put this uh, Y component at half of where it's of where it was previously. And you can see here my arrow is getting squished a bit because my ball is moving in and out from the origin, which is pretty cool. And so this is really useful. You can use this to display um, an object's uh, position vector like this. You can attach the position of the arrow to the ball and show its velocity. So let's suppose I make a velocity vector. Uh, let's just, uh, yeah, so let's do position equals ball.pause. We'll start it at the ball. And we'll have its axis, uh, let's just start with 000 for right now. Uh, Color.red, there we go. No, not red, let's make this one green, there we go. And what I can do is I can put in the velocity vector. Um, I won't bore you with the um, math on that, but its axis is now going to be r times vector. Uh, actually, I don't need parentheses there too. But basically you take a time derivative of it, cosine is going to become negative sine of time. This is going to become one half cosine of time, zero, close that up. If, if the derivative business doesn't make any sense to you, just, just ignore that. It's just trust me, this will turn out to be the velocity. Um, and then I also need to update vel.pause to be ball.pause. And so now what I'll have on the screen, I have one arrow showing me the thing's position and one arrow showing me the thing's velocity just by updating their, their positions and their axes accordingly to the thing that I need in the physics. 
Okay, one last thing I'll show you is about this um, shaft width business. Um, let's get our A1 back up here, shall we? We'll work with that. Um, I wanted, this is a part that confused me. I shouldn't say that. This is the part that confuses me every time I use an arrow. If you put in A dot shaft width, I want you to watch what happens. Notice it prints out a value of zero. The default of zero is the trigger that tells the GlowScript library to auto scale this based on the length, right? So by default, the shaft width is one tenth of the length of the arrow. The head width is two times the shaft width and the head length is three times the shaft width. So when you have zero in here, all of that automatically scales. So if you want that to be different, we have to change it. So we have to tell it uh, a1.shaft width equals, and this is the part that's difficult because I don't know what it was before, because when I go to print it, it's actually zero. Uh, but what I can do is I can go up here, I can look at the length. The length is uh, just over the square root of five. So that would put the length at, at about two and a quarter. So if I put a1.shaft width equals uh, see, that would originally be 0 0.25. Let's try 0 0.15 and let's have it print again. So we'll print before the change and after the change. You notice it got a lot thinner. It's much more pencil looking now. So it goes from, from a default of zero to our new value of 0 0.15. Uh, I believe the, the head width and head length also scaled with that. Let's take this to another, take this another step down and see that those continue yeah 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 the, uh, the the head width and head length continue to scale down with that uh because i can also put in a1 dot head width and a1 dot head length and then we'll copy and paste those down here control two yeah so those are still defaulted to zero so as long as those are set to zero uh, those are going to scale with the width of the arrow shaft. So you can modify those if you want to. You know, maybe you want to encode some additional information in the head width. Uh, let's see. So usually that is two times this value. Let's make it ten times this value. There you go. So if you need, you know, an exaggerated arrow, you know, maybe like this is the magnitude and this is the standard deviation or something like that of your measurement. So anyway, that's a bit about arrows in VPython. I hope that is helpful to you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.